What is happening to the studios we loved? How can they make some of the greatest games of all time, then turn around and just make disappointment after disappointment? It felt like the end of AAA games, but then Elden Ring came out. Why is Elden Ring such a breath of fresh air when most other AAA games feel copy pasted? And why did this game cause so much controversy? Elden Ring is game of the year? The game is Bah, man. To answer these questions, we first need to understand that when Elden Ring came out, the game defied everyone's expectation. Elden Ring sold 12 million copies in the first two weeks. Even Miyazaki, the mastermind behind Elden Ring, was surprised by the success. And to put the sales into context, Elden Ring at release was on pace to sell the same amount of copies as some of the best-selling open-world games of the last decade. GTA 5, Skyrim, and Breath of the Wild. I mean, if you really think about it, Elden Ring should not have been performing as well as these other games. Don't get me wrong, Elden Ring is an incredible game, but most FromSoft games are pretty niche and usually target a more hardcore and advanced player base. By nature, FromSoft games shouldn't sell as much as Zelda or GTA, but this time, Elden Ring did. Why? What was different about Elden Ring and what set it apart from other FromSoft games? The answer, nothing really. Yes, Elden Ring was open world, so unlike other Souls games, you could avoid certain bosses and areas. Yes, the lore was some of the best I'd ever seen in the game. The world was so immersive that I don't think I could ever find everything in the mysterious world of the lands between. Seriously, Elden Ring is a masterpiece. Go play this game. But I would argue that almost every FromSoft game is a masterpiece too. And just like the other Souls games, Elden Ring still targets a hardcore player base, and the gameplay is still punishing as hell. So why then is Elden Ring capturing a much larger chunk of the gaming market? There is a huge demand for high quality AAA games, and not much of a supply. I mean, imagine you're at a restaurant, and you have a hankering for some steak, but they're out of stock. All they have left is some burnt scraps of cooked steak they can shovel onto a plate, or you can get a delicious honey-baked ham with a sweet honey drizzle. So although you wanted a steak, you choose the honey-baked ham because the steak scraps just aren't edible. This is the AAA game market we are in right now. Millions of gamers looking at the piss-poor options, praying to Gabe, the god of Steam, to give them anything fun and exciting. It doesn't matter what genre, as long as it's good. Just give us something edible and satisfying. So when Elden Ring came out and the world saw how amazing this game was, people who were originally intimidated by Souls games looked at Elden Ring and said, screw it. Let's try it out. I got nothing else to play. So like the guy choosing the ham over the burnt steak, I would argue that Elden Ring's meteoric success is not only a byproduct of how good the game is, but because there's such a small supply of good AAA titles right now, Elden Ring really is the best option on the menu. However, like every industry, there will be people who hate or love something purely because of its popularity. And man, do we have a few in the gaming industry. But what's surprising this time, many of the people who hate Elden Ring are developers at other studios, infuriated by Elden Ring's success. Same developer who said, Elden Ring's UX is so bad that I can only imagine FromSoft's devs smoking at their desks and using CRT monitors. I guess these developers felt that the game violated certain tenets of game development, and by violating these rules of development, Elden Ring didn't deserve its success. Why would these devs be so angry about Elden Ring's success? Who cares if Elden Ring didn't follow the rules of game development? It's not like Elden Ring's success affects them. Well, mostly. I can see why developers at Guerrilla Games were upset. Elden Ring released only one week after Horizon Forbidden West, so you could say that Elden Ring overshadowed the hype around Horizon. So Horizon possibly didn't perform as expected. The reason is petty, and in no way Elden Ring's fault, but at least I can see where the Guerrilla Dev's frustration comes from. But why were Ubisoft devs so upset? None of their sales were affected by the release of Elden Ring. Now, remember, these were only a few people and not the whole studio who were angry at Elden Ring. However, the response from gamers to not only these devs, but Ubisoft as a whole showed us something really interesting. Gamers are tired of playing the same thing. We are tired of the formulaic nature of Ubisoft in most other AAA games. Sure. Yeah. It has a satisfying shooter looter game loop. The graphics are great, the mechanics are well tuned and executed, and the story is acceptable. Bummer? Yeah! It's exactly the same as all other Ubisoft games. It's just another copy paste. You see, when every user interface, every store, and every game looks relatively the same, 
We notice, it's like hotel art. Each piece of art is theoretically different, but somehow feels and functions exactly the same. So when the first few Assassin's Creed games came out, they felt new and exciting. Running around the Holy Land of Rome, leaping off buildings, sneaking or hiding in hay bales, it was unique. But now I can barely tell the difference between Assassin's Creed gameplay and every other Ubisoft game. Ubisoft thinks if they just change the era and location of each game, we won't notice. I mean, one has knives and one has guns, right? But just like hotel art, they may look different, they don't feel any different. It's the same game with a new coat of paint. This reason is why Ubisoft devs reacted the way they did. They have been taught that to make a successful game, you need to follow a formula. So when a studio like FromSoft makes Elden Ring without the formula, and it's incredibly successful, it infuriates developers who have had their creativity restricted and pushed into a box. Now, these devs who criticize FromSoft should take full responsibility for what they said in a public forum. However, I also blame AAA studios like Ubisoft for forcing their teams to create unimaginative copycats of their previous 10 games. We can get mad at a few devs all we want, but the real problem comes from the Ubisoft's executives choosing to be formulaic. But why are the leaders of Ubisoft and other AAA studios hellbent on producing the same type of game? Why force your devs to work on the 100th Assassin's Creed when they want to work on something new and exciting? The answer, stability and money. This may be obvious to everyone, but milking an IP over and over again is the easiest way to make money as an entertainment company. It's the reason why we've had a new Call of Duty 19 years in a row and also why 2022's top 20 best-selling games are all existing IP or sequels, except for Elden Ring. Seriously, look at this. Elden Ring is the only game on here that is a new IP. What's even more crazy about this list is that two of the top 20 games were Call of Duty games, and three of them were sports sequels, which are notorious for being the exact same as their predecessor. We can complain about these games being soulless copycats all we want, but we're the ones buying these soulless games in droves. And for companies to come up with brand new games and IP is risky, so studios will make sequels for as long as possible if we keep buying them. So I don't ever see studios not making sequels when we buy them year after year. That said, there is a negative effect on your brand when you don't release something new or innovative. Think about it. What is one of your favorite games? Remember when that game was released and how you felt about the developer of that game. Pretty good, right? Then think about that specific developer's most recent games. How do those new games compare with your favorite game? And how do you feel about that developer now? Probably not great. For me, it was Blizzard and Warcraft 3. This game made Blizzard my favorite developer, and I wouldn't allow a bad word to be said about them. But now, Blizzard has released cash grab after cash grab, not to mention everything else they have done. And I can't help but look at Blizzard with disappointment. A bad game happens sometimes, but Blizzard hasn't made a good game since 2016 with Overwatch. Not to mention they somehow butchered Warcraft 3 with the release of Reforged. I just can't imagine defending Blizzard anymore. The Blizzard brand has fallen from one of the greatest video game developers to a company that is compared to EA. But as we saw with Blizzard in the beginning, the opposite occurs when you release something new that just blows people away like Elden Ring. Gamers will have your back, even if the game isn't perfect. I mean, look at one of the biggest controversies on YouTube, featuring the Act Man and Quantum TV. This guy made a video saying like Elden Ring sucks or something and he hates everyone that plays Elden Ring. So Ackman made a video about like the worst take in Elden Ring. The drama from these Elden Ring videos escalated to way more controversial stuff like bigotry, copyright, demonetization, and the Ackman trending as the number one story on Twitter. But all this stemmed from arguments about Elden Ring. Why? Because FromSoft had gained some huge brownie points for releasing pure art. And like any extravagant piece of art, people will have visceral reactions, both positive and negative which is also why people get so angry when you change the story and lore of video games with TV shows like Halo or The Witcher. I mean, Witcher 3 was a beloved game and a piece of art to so many people, not to mention the comics. So when you mess up the story and lore in the show, the community isn't toxic when they react negatively. They are passionately asking for you to respect that piece of art as they do. 
Now, all this said, I don't just want to bash on AAA studios and walk away. True constructive criticism should have ideas for improvement, not just ranting. So if I had the opportunity to consult a AAA studio, I would suggest the Pareto principle to be applied company-wide. This principle, also known as the 80-20 rule, is the observation that roughly 80% of consequences come from 20% of causes. One company effectively applying this technique is Google. During my time at Google, I saw how they allowed their employees to spend 20% of their time working on something the individual thought would most benefit the company. Both Gmail and AdSense came from this practice, and the former made Google more than $54 billion just in 2022. A more applicable example is Fortnite. The original Fortnite concept was developed from an internal game jam put on by Epic Games. Although they don't strictly follow the 80-20 rule, a game jam is just one example of its application. Letting your team take time to work on new and innovative ideas. Just pure creativity with no deadlines. And creativity is the key to a company's longevity. You need to constantly innovate to stay alive. And it's what the AAA industry desperately needs right now. So how can we get more games like Elden Ring? AAA studios need to allocate 20% of all their resources to working on new and innovative games. No deadlines, no parameters, just pure creativity. Let your developers work part-time on something they are passionate about and be amazed at what they'll create. I'm not saying stop making sequels. As we saw, AAA studios make a lot of money from sequels and sequels aren't always a bad thing. I'm stoked for a Hollow Knight 2 and I pray for a Warcraft 4. However, for AAA studios to be profitable while garnering the love and support of the gaming community, AAA studios should look at Elden Ring as an example to stop making formulaic games while applying Pareto's principle to let their developers conceptualize and build masterpieces we all will appreciate like Elden Ring. Hey. Thanks to everyone who joined our Discord and submitted their favorite indie games for this week's video. The indie game our community voted as their favorite for this video was Inmost, made by Hidden Layer Games. It's a puzzle platform game and it's currently being sold on multiple platforms. So go check it out and join our Discord to let us know what game we should feature next. 